Hey everybody, my name is Jonathan Daggerhart and I'm going to show you how to encrypt field data within Drupal 8. The first thing I want to do before we get started is take a look at the modules we'll be using. It takes about four modules to get this set up right, but they're all relatively simple in their own right. The first step is the field encryption module. This is the module that will actually create the setting within each of your fields that allow you to enable or disable field encryption for any particular field on your Drupal site. This module requires though uh, a few others, but most specifically the encrypt module. The encrypt module is what provides an API to Drupal that allows for simple encryption and decryption of arbitrary data. So the field encryption module is going to use the encrypt provided API and encrypt and decrypt our fields. But the encrypt module actually needs a uh, but the encrypt module needs a encryption method or algorithm I suppose in which uh, it uses to do said encryption and decryption. So for this presentation I'm going to use the real AES module which provides the encryption method to the encrypt module uh, but alternatively, you could choose Sodium, and there may even be a few other encryption methods available. And finally, all of these encryption methods need a key by which it uses to uh, randomize or create the encryption. And so we'll also need the key module. So that's all we need. Those are the four modules we're going to use is field encryption, encrypt, real AES, and key. Uh, but once we get started, you'll see that even though there's four modules involved, it's relatively easy to set up. So let's take a look. All right, I've got me a simple Drupal 8 website set up here with a few modules enabled just for administrative purposes. But the very first thing I need to do is I need to install all four of these modules to Drupal. Uh, the easiest way to do that, the way that I'm going to use, is with Composer. So here I have my command line and I'm already at my Drupal site uh, web root and I'm just going to Composer require all four of these modules. Key module, real AES, encrypt, and field encrypt. Once this runs, we'll enable the modules and then work through setting them up. If you don't have a Composer uh, Drupal setup, then you'll need to not only download the modules the normal way you might, but you also need to download each of their dependencies. I suppose if you've been working with Drupal 8 long enough without Composer, you probably have a way that you like to do this already. While this is installing, I'll point out that this blog post that I created on my website goes through all of this that I'm about to show you in text, if you'd rather see it in a text format. All right, so the modules should be installed, well, downloaded, as well as their dependencies. So let's go into Drupal and enable all four of these modules. We're gonna need field encrypt and encrypt and key and real AES. There we are. Now once these modules are installed, the first thing we need to do is we need to use the key module to, to add a new encryption key to our system. All of these modules that we installed can be found under configuration and system. Here you'll see we have keys, encryption profiles, which is the encrypt module, and the field encrypt module. Let's start with keys. So all we need to do is we need to add a new key. We're going to give the key uh, some name that just identifies what we'll be using this key for. And I'll just keep it simple with saying field encryption. You could also provide a description if you'd like, but it's not necessary. And now we need to tell Drupal what type of key this is. Uh, this is going to be used for uh, encryption. And the key that I'm going to generate is going to be 256-bit. 
and where the provider settings for the key is where this key is stored. So you can store it in the Drupal configuration, which is in the database, but that's not ideal. Better would be in the file system, outside of the web root, ideally. So whoops, here it is asking, where is my key? Which means we need to generate a key. So I'm going to go back to the command line. And I'm going to visit this directory I've made outside of the web root. And I'm going to generate a new key using the dd command. You don't have to worry too much about the specifics of this command because generally you'll only need to generate this key once. So this command will generate a random set of bytes for us and it'll encode it as base64. And I'm going to store this in the file called mykey.key doesn't matter too much. If I look in the directory, I should have mykey.key. .key. That's great. I've obviously done this before. So now I just need to go back to the key module and tell it where this key is located. And this is just the file location, the absolute file location to the key. I need to inform the module that this is base64 encoded, and I should be good to go. That looks good. If there was something wrong with the key, it, it would tell us here, or it could tell us here. There's a number of places during this process where you may get an error that tells you either the key is the wrong size or unable to find the key or something like that. But if you keep it simple, then you won't have any trouble. So now that we have a key, what we need to do is we need to set up the encrypt module uh, by creating an encryption profile that uses this key. Now we're going to create a encryption profile. Again, we just give it a simple name. I'm just going to go ahead and call it, I'm going to call it field encryption AES because this will clearly identify the purpose of this encryption profile as well as the encryption method that I will choose here. And for encryption method, I will choose authenticated AES from the real AES module. Once I changed that setting, you notice that the key became available. This is the key that I just created. I'll leave that as it is and click Save. OK, so now we have an encryption profile. And this should be working. But thanks to the developers of this module, we can go ahead and test it here before we go much further. So under Operations, I'm going to go to Test. And here at the top, I'm just going to provide some arbitrary text. And I'll go ahead and click Encrypt. And here it is showing me that text encrypted. So to make sure it decrypts correctly, I'm just going to copy that and paste it into this decryption box and click Decrypt. So here we are, my text back in its original form. This encryption profile is working correctly. Now that we've set up a key and an encryption profile that uses that key, all we need to do is set up the field encryption module and configure fields to be encrypted. So let's take a look at that under configuration and system and field encryption settings. Now this page isn't actually defining which fields would be encrypted, but I wanted to get, go through a quick overview of what this page is for. This page lists all the available field types within the Drupal install and the properties on each of those field types. What we're seeing here is just the default settings for different field types within Drupal. For example, if I set up a new link field and I tell it to enable encryption on that field, then by default, both the URI and the title of that field will be encrypted. These defaults could be useful if you're setting up many different fields and you're going through the same process over and over. But for now, I don't need to change anything here. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new field. So I'll do this in the article content type. So I'll go to structure and content types and articles and manage fields. I'm going to add a new field and it's just going to be a simple text plain field. There we 
There we are. And I'll name this example encrypted. And save. Now on the next page, we have the, the field storage settings. We see this new setting that allows us to encrypt the field. So I'm going to check that. And you'll notice that I have a few more options. The property of this field, which will be encrypted by default, is the text value. With such a simple field, that's the only thing there is to encrypt. The encryption profile to be used to encrypt and decrypt this field, as well as this uncacheable setting. So by default, uh, whenever you're enabling encryption on a field, it's going to be set as uncacheable. That is so that the decrypted value of these fields are not exposed to the cache and they can't leak out through some sort of cache, caching mechanism. But it is important to note that if every field in your entire system is uncacheable, then you're going you're gonna to suffer a performance drawback there. Generally, when you're setting up your site, you're going to want to be pretty careful about what you choose to be uncacheable and what you choose to encrypt, frankly. If you have a low traffic site, then it may not be that important, but if you have a popular or high traffic site in general, it will be. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save This Field Settings, and we'll get to the normal field settings page, which I will just go ahead and click Save again. All right, so now let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Let's create a new article. I'll go to Content and Add Content, Article. And there it is. Uh, so let's just make this a simple post, blah, blah. And down here, in, I have my new field, the example encrypted. I'm just going to type in this text should be encrypted. And I will go ahead and save and publish this article. Now here we are, if I scroll down, we should see that this text looks absolutely normal for the field. And if I go back and I edit the field, again, it will look absolutely normal. That's because the module is decrypting it whenever the node is viewed, as far as uh, here on the form, or whenever it's displayed like normal to the user. So if you're new to this, then the question might be, well, where is this encrypted and how is this encrypted? And so to show that, I'd like to take a look at the database. Here I have my database for this simple website. I'm just going to refresh the tables and we'll see uh, somewhere in here, we're going to have my new field. There it is, node example uh, encrypted, node field example encrypted. And if I click on this table, normally, we would see the value of that field here in this column of the table. But instead we see the word just encrypted. That is because the field encrypt module doesn't store the data encrypted directly here into the node, uh, into the node field table. Instead, it stores it in its own table, which is somewhere right up here. There we are, encrypted field, which is just a list of which fields are encrypted and more importantly, the encrypted field data. So here we are. There is our, uh, there's our field data right there, the encrypted value value. So there it is, it's not in plain text. It is encrypted with a unique key that we generated and should be very hard to uh, decrypt if possible at all. But let's just go ahead and complete the circle of this example that I'm showing. And what I want to do is I want to take this value and I'm going to put it back into the test page for our encryption profile and see if it decrypts correctly. I'm pretty sure it does, but I thought doing this might help show off exactly what's going on. So I'm just going to go to configuration, system, encryption profiles, and I'm going to go to the operation of test for my profile scroll down to the bottom and paste in that encrypted text. And let's decrypt it. Oh, it is base64 encoded, I suppose. So let's base64 decode that encrypted text and decrypt one more time. 
And there we are, we have our original text. This text should be encrypted. And that's it. So now you know how to set up field encryption in your on your Drupal 8 website, which means you can have data stored securely at rest in your database as well as in your database backups. Thank you so much.